We're going to have a look at the January 13 foundation paper which you practiced on last week. We're going to specifically look at question 2 which was the how question. So this is the appreciating style question looking at the writer technique and specifically here how does the writer try to show that Mike Perham's voyage was really tough. As is commonly the case with foundation paper questions you're given a couple of pointers about what to write. So it says you should write about what the writer tells us about the voyage and the words and phrases used by the writer. As with all the main questions, it's a 10 mark question on the WJC paper. So that means you want to get roughly 5 marks for each of these. It doesn't have to be exact, you could get 6 and 4, but that should be the rough split. Spend half your time talking about what the writer tells us, and half your time talking about what the words and phrases the writer has used imply or suggest. So. Here's the text we're working from, and as I always remind you, you need to be highlighting or at the least underlining your text as you go through it, so that you are able to efficiently answer the question when you come to writing it up. I've used two different colours of highlighter for the two different parts of the question. So the purple part is about what happened to Mike, or what happened to make the voice so tough, and the ones I've done in yellow are the ones relating to the words and phrases used by the writer. Uh, there's a couple I've done in orange, which are what I would consider sort of higher tier responses, so slightly more subtle things the writer does which you could talk about. One thing I'd like you to notice, and this goes back to when we were doing the literary study with the Mice and Men, and even when we looked at the J.K. Rowling transcripts, is that I've kept all my highlights really quite short. Uh, there's a couple of longer ones, but the majority are just one or two words, because that's what you want to have for your quotes. Keep them as short and as focused as possible. If you're copying out a whole sentence, not only are you wasting a lot of time copying out what's already been written, but you're not focusing, you're not going to be getting the marks because you're not paying attention to the language being used. Alright, that said, let's go through the piece and see what sort of points we could make to get our full 10 marks. We'll start with the what happened to make the voyage tough, so these are the purple comments. And the first one I picked up on was um, Guinness Book of World Records. So obviously to get in the Guinness Book of World Records is a big achievement, you have to do something that's um, really amazing, so that already suggests that he was doing something pretty tough. They then go on to give you some statistics about his voyage, uh, which again suggest it was tough. He covered 30,000 miles, well that's a long way, and he was cooped up in a 50 foot boat. So it was a small space to be in, uh, didn't have a lot of space to move around, so it's going to be tough to be there over that distance. Uh, we also have that he only had 10 minute intervals of sleep. Again, just factually, that's a tough thing to have. We need more sleep than that, so sleeping for 10 minutes at a time is going to be difficult. Another sort of fairly obvious point, a, a thing which happened which made it tough, was that there was quite a lot of damage to his boat over the journey. So it was damage to the boat's autopilot system, and as you know from question one, which asked about what was damaged in the boat, uh, there was other damage as well, such as the uh, sails getting ripped and uh, the electrical systems being disabled. Moving further along the text, uh, we have a description of the boat being caught in a storm, and it said the yacht spun more than 90 degrees. That's quite dramatic. Um, it suggests that the boat was sort of out of control, it would be very difficult to be in that situation, so again it suggests it's tough. Further down we have a storm which lasted for 24 hours, so that's a full day, he would have to have been awake for that entire time because he couldn't leave the boat because it would have gone out of control, so just the fact of staying up for 24 hours is pretty tough. You may begin to notice that these purple ones are kind of the obvious statements because it's just literally what happened, you're not really going into depth and analysing, you're just stating what happened. So these are sort of covering the uh, F to D cri uh, grade criteria for the foundation paper. Uh, once we go on to the yellows you'll see that we're going more towards the C grade, but just on the theme of it being quite obvious and 
but you can make obvious points to get a few marks. Um, Mike Perham literally says that was really tough. So we know that his voyage was tough because he said it was. A little further on, he says there's nothing to stop the wind, so that suggests there's no protection, which makes it tough to stay safe. The final thing in terms of what happened was that um, Craig Glenday from Guinness World Records said that even the most experienced of sailors would be tested by the mental and physical stamina required. That's quite a long quote. I would focus in on the key words which are most experienced of sailors. And he's just saying that it's tough for even a, an older, more capable sailor. So for someone who's very young, it would be especially tough or really tough to use the words from the question. All right, we're now going to look at the language which was used. We can start with the headline. If we think about um, our mnemonic for remembering how to answer these how questions, okay, we have um, slap the happy cow, which is S-L-A-P-T-H-C, standing for structure, language, approach, picture, tone, heading, and content. So starting with the heading, they've included the word conqueror. So a conqueror is someone who overcomes a challenge, some, something which is tough. So calling him a conqueror immediately lets us know that it's going to be a tough voyage. In the first paragraph, we have a comparison with ordinary teenagers versus what Mike Perham was doing. So they've said um, he had bigger things keeping him awake than exam results. So that comparison immediately lets us know that what he was doing was a bit tougher than what ordinary teachers are doing. In the next line, we have the word battling. This is part of a theme which comes throughout this text of him fighting against the elements and having these great challenges to overcome. So the word battling, it suggests combat, fighting against something tough. Later on, we have the word grueling. It's a synonym for tough or challenging, so it's just another word which means something like tough. So the writer's choice lets us know that it was a tough uh, voyage. Also, uh, although I haven't highlighted it here, the word voyage um, suggests an epic journey. So again, something which is tough. Further down, we have a verb, and it's just a single word, like a lot of these language quotes. The rice chosen a single word, surviving, which suggests that he was only just managing, again, because it's so tough. The word buffeted suggests that the weather conditions are sort of attacking him, which makes it tough. And later on, we see this again with the monstrous storms. We also have a focus on it being uh, lonely, which suggests he was on his own for a long time, which was tough. Actually, that should probably have been a, a purple highlight. That's more what happened. The word wedged. Um, again, suggests that it was a tough voyage because it's an uncomfortable position to be in. So he was out of control, he couldn't escape. It was tough. The verb flung. Can you give a highlight up there? Um, so the verb flung, it implies he has no power and he's thrown around like a rag doll. So he's just been flung against the wall. You'd associate flung with an inanimate object, not with a human being. So it suggests he was powerless out there, making it very tough. The word berserk suggests that it was crazy, uncontrollable, and dangerous. So again, that language choice lets us know it was tough. And Mike's own language choice, he says he felt tiny. So it shows how he's small and powerless in the face of the challenges he faced. So he was tiny out there because he was flung around. And this also sets up a nice contrast with the huge seas. So the seas are huge. Mike felt tiny, so that contrast which the writer set up again makes it seem tough. The idea of the storms being monstrous uh, makes the storms come to life. It personifies them. It suggests they have a will of their own. So again, that's tough. It plays into this idea of him battling against the elements. And finally, we have the verb ripped. So it's a very violent verb. It suggests there's lots of violence happening against him and his boat. So again, that suggests it was tough. Okay, one final point. These two in orange, which I skipped over, 
So this would be more of a um, kind of higher tier response, like a, a B grade, maybe an A grade response, because here the writer's done something with grammar to suggest that the voyage was tough. So if we look at the part of the sentence this is in, the teenager was flung upside down and was forced to brace himself against the ceiling. So here, uh, Mike is having something done to him. He's passive. We call this the passive voice. So when you put was before a verb, it becomes passive. He's not the one doing the flinging, but he's the one who was flung. So through the use of the passive voice, the writer is suggesting that Mike has no control over his situation, and therefore it was a very tough situation to be in. Now, I may have spent a little bit longer highlighting and commenting on these points than you would be able to in the exam, but that's because I was being really thorough with this. If you look at how many things I've highlighted, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. So I've highlighted twenty-five potential points you can make for a ten-mark question. You would only need to spot um, ten of these and maybe even fewer if you explain them well to get your full 10 marks. So that shows how much content there is in each uh, text to answer each question. And it's just about picking out what you can in the time you've got. In the next video, we'll look at how we would actually phrase our answer to this.